Welcome to Building Astropad. I'm Matt Runge, co-founder and CEO at Astropad, and I'll be taking you behind the scenes at our company where we build software and hardware products for creative people. So if you're a creator interested in starting a business or creating your next big project, join us and let's learn together. Well, hi everybody. Matt here with Savannah again. Hello. And today you had a topic in mind, Savannah. You wanted to talk about my experience being a founder and a parent at the same time. So you said you've got a bunch of questions ready. I'm going to grill you. Yeah. Yes. So I'll hand it off to you. You take this, <laughs> you take over, Savannah. Yeah. Well, I'm curious about this because I feel like you've been doing this quite gracefully. I oh, mean, well, that's a good compliment. Huh? Doesn't always feel that way so. on my end, but okay. <laughs> okay. Well, from the outside, it looks like you're doing it pretty well, especially because you have like really young kids which I feel like maybe that's where you should start is like, how old are your kids? Yeah, so I've got two boys. My oldest is three and my youngest is about to turn one. He'll turn one in January. So they are they are young, especially the not quite one year old, you know, he's still an infant, he's still a handful. Yeah, plus like three is sort of like the demon age, I feel like. <laughs> Well, my, my older sister has a three-year-old right now, and it's like she is struggling. My oldest son, Will, he's always been a tough, tough nut. He's always been a tough one. So it didn't really change when I rolled into three. He was he was very colicky as a baby. So if anything, that was the hardest time. So if, really for us, it's been downhill from there, Yeah, which I think is not necessarily the norm for other people. Where they're like, oh my God, as a baby, they were, they were easier. And now all of a sudden they're like, you know, really stubborn and difficult. And they're three and they're a, like a te little teenager. And it's like, wow, he was always like that. So, <laughs> And then Eddie is a lot more chill, right? Yeah, he's also pretty stubborn. But compared to his older brother, he's, yeah. yeah I mean, he wasn't colicky as a baby. So, yeah. Neither are very good sleepers, though. So that's been a very big ongoing problem. Hmm. Well, yeah, from my perspective, it seems like you handle like the parenting and CEO thing pretty well. And it's something that I'm curious about because I definitely want to have a family of my own someday. And I also could see myself having my own business someday, too. And Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I'm curious how it all works together because like for me, I grew up in a very like traditional household where, you know, my dad worked all the time and was not home very often. And my mom stayed at home because I had four siblings. So huge family. Right. And sure. I didn't really get like a good idea of what it's like to juggle both like having your own career and managing the household because it was very divided between my parents. So I kind of want to ask you about how you do yeah, that. Let's go, let's go for it. Okay. Well, I'm glad it seems like I'm managing it because I can tell you from the inside, it certainly does not always feel that way. <laughs> okay. Well, we definitely should get into that. <laughs> so let's that, dig into but, it. Well, okay. So my first question for you is when you chose to start your family, was that a strategic timeline? And really, I'm wondering, did you feel like you had to get the business in a certain to a certain point or like find a certain level of success with it in order to feel like stable enough to have a kid? Yeah, so that certainly helps depending on what you're doing too in in the business, like, do you have a product that's out there that you're selling or are you trying to fundraise, something like that it would make it a lot more difficult if you're, you know, getting right into a product launch. That being said, we did do it, you know, my first son was born during the, our first Kickstarter. So I will never it, forget. <laughs> yeah, not that it can't, it can't work, but that certainly makes it harder. It did make me feel more comfortable that the business was further along, that we weren't in like the first year. It would have been harder in the first year to have pulled it off, but my wife, Emily, does work full-time as well. So there was less pressure there as well because there's two people that work. It was not that I was the only one working. 
So that took the pressure off, off some there where ultimately it wasn't so much the business. It was more like, well, we're getting older and we want to have a family. So we need to do this. And the other thing too, is I, I don't think there's ever a perfect time. You know, it's like many things like starting a business or having a kid or doing anything like really big like that. I really don't think there's, yeah, there's a perfect time. If you try to find a perfect time, you'll be waiting forever. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely something that I think about a lot, you know, as a woman too, because it's like, on the one hand, my mom had kids super young and she just had so much energy to give. And that sounds really nice to be able to just be like young and like bounce back from, you know, she had five kids. It's kind of crazy. And she had so much energy, but at the same time, like it's different. I have a career, you don't want to put it on hold. And so I've, you know, I've read so many things about like when it's the right time to balance those two things. And at the end of the day, it just sounds like there's not a right answer. Yeah, there's really not. I think there's so many ways to go about it. Really so many ways. I mean, I, and I've seen examples of it working both ways. People having really young, having kids really young in their career and people having it really late, people having it in the middle in all of those scenarios working. Yeah. 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 Cause you were in your like early thirties, right? When yeah. You had I was 32. My wife is 29 mm. at the time. Okay. Yeah. That was exactly the same age my dad was when he had me. I remember that. Oh, wow. I'm the oldest as well. From okay. So you had Will during our Kickstarter. It was actually like the day that we launched our Kickstarter yep. yeah, when Emily crazy. went into labor and our first Kickstarter. And then you took paternity leave. And I remember that being hard, right? Because he was premature so That's you right, yeah. so he was premature you know we were in the middle of like a big thing in the company but you took paternity leave and i'm wondering what that was like for you to co- sort of like put the company on hold for a bit yeah it wasn't a problem in that case because he was born premature and it was a very nerve-wracking situation and he was in like the neonatal intensive care unit for babies for a week after he was born. And so I was like totally checked out from anything with the company. And thankfully, you know, you and my co-founder Giovanni really took over and ran things while I was out of pocket. But I was so preoccupied with everything else that was going on. I really didn't give it a lot of thought. Yeah, there was just so many, it really, really put things in perspective when he was born compared to prior when, you know, I spent a lot more time worrying about, you know, things at the business and then, you know, seeing a baby in the NICU, all of a sudden, a lot of other worries fade away and they don't seem so important anymore. So that really didn't make it that hard. The second time around with my second kid, Eddie, it was a bit harder because he wasn't premature. He didn't need any special care. So it was a little bit, a little bit more difficult the second time around to disconnect And I actually, I think what I did was I took a couple weeks completely off. And then after that, I kind of went into a part-time role where, and I kind of eased up over time where I didn't do a lot of hours, but I just check in to answer questions and see if anybody needed anything. Okay. I didn't, then I'd log off, you know, just like an hour or two a day, not very much. And then over time did more and more. So I kind of spread my paternity leave out over over more time and that worked that worked pretty well the second time around the first time around for my first son he just needed so much care that i was just gone completely gone for for a month so you were actually the first person in the company to have kids and i'm curious if your experience like influenced the paternity maternity policies that you know, we have at Astropad because I don't think we've really had a policy before you had kids because we just didn't need one. Yeah, I'm curious if that if that influenced you at all. Yeah, no, it definitely did. It definitely did. Because from that experience, I remember being like, okay, we need we need to have a policy because this is like such an intense thing that like it doesn't, you know, we're a small company, so we can't necessarily offer the same things like a really big company can. But it was like, still, we need some kind of policy because you know, when you have a kid born, you're at home, you're focused on that. 
even if somebody was showing up to work, you know, they're, they're totally checked out, right? Like they don't have enough sleep. They're checked out. They're thinking about other stuff. So it's like, you know what? Let's give them plenty of time off. Let's give and just plan on that, right? So we've got a month for paternity, two months for maternity. I remember too, I don't remember exactly what it was, but an argument too that it really should be the same, maternity and paternity as well, which I'm open to that as well, revising it in the future. I remember the last time why we didn't change it because I was about to take paternity leave. I didn't want to make it look like I was trying to make it longer for myself. That's, <laughs> not, <laughs> that's not what it was about. But yeah, no, it definitely influenced. It was like, all right, we really need to have a policy, right? Like we very much need to. And so we set that up after. Nobody besides me has taken it though. So we'll see. Eventually, eventually somebody will. Yeah. Yeah. So now that you and Emily have sort of like found a rhythm with, you know, your children and working, what does it look like between splitting the responsibilities? Yeah. So we're pretty 50 50 split on it. So different than what you talked about earlier, Savannah you know, where you had a much more traditional family growing up. My wife, Emily, has a career. She's a lawyer, right? And she's got a full-time job and she's busy with that and she enjoys it and she doesn't She doesn't want to give that up and I don't want to give up what I'm doing either. So we both work and our kids go to daycare and we try to split things 50-50, which can be, you know, very much a challenge, but we try to try to as best we can, just like divide up divide up the work, you know, somebody watches them in the morning, somebody, you know, maybe we'll, one person gets them ready for daycare and drops them off. The other one picks them up and gets them home and takes care of them there. Okay. What do the evenings look like for you? Well, so that's one thing that changed big time for me is I used to be much more free form with my time, even work-wise, like I wouldn't work as much as of like strict hours. And, you know, if something was taking me longer, you know, I just work into the evening, no big deal. Work after dinner, doesn't really matter, just kind of all bleeds together. But after having kids, that's not the same. It's like there's only certain hours of the day I can really work. It's, you know, get them, drop them off to, drop them off at daycare. We usually get there like 8, 8.30, get home, start working. And then, you know, they get picked up and they're usually home around five or a little bit before that. And so that's my window. That's like my set window in which to work. Because beyond that, then they come home and then, you know, it's like got to help take care of them. Got to get them ready for bed, gives them baths. And so make dinner, all those things. And before I might have just like worked and just be like, no, you know what? I'm on a roll. It's, you know, 4.30, it's five, but I'm feeling productive about this. I'm just going to keep working. Now there's a hard stop. It's like, okay, Kids are home. Here, my son will come run in my office. All right, I'm done. You know, this is it. Then they get to bed, usually by about seven, take care of some other stuff. And then I could work on some things here and there, but often I'm too exhausted. And I pretty much only work at that time if I either am super excited about something and I really, really want to, and that's kind of like my leisure time, or there's something I absolutely have to get done. Otherwise, evenings at that point, then it's like, okay, take care of things around the house and rest and relax. Because that's my like personal time then as well. Like they're in bed. I'm not working. Okay. And my son also gets up super early too. He gets up at usually 5.30, 5 to 5.30. So oh it's not like gosh. in the morning either that there's like a lot of time, right? It's like one of us is like taking care of him in the morning. So it's that time at night. So it's really restricted the time I have available to work on things where in the past I might've just thrown hours, just put in a ton of time on something. Now I don't really have that option as much. Do you feel like you are less productive though, or is it just the same amount of productivity squeezed into? No, it's, yeah, it's squeezed into, and, and I always ask myself, what did I do with all that time I had before? Like, I seriously don't know where it went. Like, I don't know what I was doing with it, right? Like, I just, like, wasted it. I don't know. I don't I don't get it. I don't get what I was doing before. Yeah, so I don't feel like I'm less productive. I've just more motivated in that time I have. And also have to rely on other people more. Just, I think, in not just work, but life in general with kids, you have to rely on people more because it's really, what's the saying? Something like it's, it takes a village to raise a kid. You know, I think that's really true. You really need help from other people. And that's what made, has made COVID particularly challenging. 
but at work too, right? It's like, well, I can't just take everything on myself. I can't do that. Not that that's a good thing for the company anyway, right? It's like, I should be delegating these other responsibilities. I should be pushing off things on other people and, you know, only work on the things that really I only truly can, can be the one to work on. And so it's made that clearer and had to work smarter, not harder with the time I have. Yeah, I feel like, you know, the parents that are in the company now, like people who have kids, there is just like another level of efficiency with the way that they work. It's like like Melissa, for example, our our office manager, like she she works these very restrictive hours, but in that time, she blows me away with with what she does and it's like yeah you don't have the option to choose when you want to be productive you just have to squeeze it in when you have time (sighs) it's crazy yeah i used to more like oh i don't feel productive right now i'm not going to do this or i'd like wander off and do other things for a while like i was just much more wasteful with my time versus now i just again i i don't have that that option i need to get the things i need to get done within that time and you know, not very often, again, unless I'm really excited about something, like I said, or I really, really have to get something done, which I I try not to be the case, you know, work later at night. But even then, it's not, it's not a ton of time, right? Because if I'm going to work late into the night, well, my kid, it's not like I can sleep, sleep in, they're going to have me up in the morning, right? So it's like, it really just sets hard stops on things. When you talk about the sleep thing, that's how I know that I'm not ready to have kids yet. Because I'm like, I I could not be getting up at 5 a.m. every day. That just, that sounds well, so we, hard. I mean, that we alternate to where you were saying like how we share the responsibility. Like sometimes I'll get up, sometimes Emily will get up. Like we'll, we'll mix things up so that's not, we can alternate sleeping in. And just going about it as a team, team effort there as well. It is important both at home and at work to make yeah. it make it through this. The other thing too is with the productivity thing is it's motivating as well because there's this little person now that depends on you and you're like, oh wow, okay, I'm no longer like just working for myself or spouse or whoever, it, you know, it's like there's this little individual that I am responsible for and I need whatever I'm doing to succeed, right? And so that can be very very motivating as well. That's to, wild. Wow. To to push things to push things forward. I remember very much feeling that after Will was first born, right? I already had that feeling when my second was born, but the first time it was like, okay, wow. I need to make this work. Like I need to push things forward cuz it's not just me anymore. So it sort of like would you say it changed your mentality around running the company then? Not completely, not like a 180. Right. But just, I'd say I put some more, some more drive. Hmm. It gave me more drive. Yeah. Not that I completely changed how how I do things. That's not the case. But it was, it was a new source of motivation. Maybe that's another way to put it. Mm -hmm. What about your risk tolerance? Like, do you feel like that's changed since, since having kids? Hmm. That's a hard one to answer. Has it changed? Another way to phrase this might be, would you do you think you would have started Astropad if you already had kids? Ultimately, yes. I think the timing might have been a little different. Yeah, I think the answer is still yes. But that's because like starting companies is something that I've always wanted to do and have done. So like I can't really get that out of my system. Like that's there regardless. So yes, but you know, I might have waited like until like my, you know, my firstborn was a year older or something. And it also helps too, because my answer to this is also reflected in the fact that my wife works full time as well, so that there is another income. If I was the only income, then yeah, that would be a, that would be a tough calculus to make. Mm, Yeah. 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 That That would be a lot, a lot harder. And I think that would affect my risk tolerance a lot more. But given that we do have, you know, two incomes and kids, that that helps. That helps kind of diffuse the risk. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So you talked about how you sort of had to, like, sacrifice the flexible productivity hours. Your schedule has changed. You've obviously had to sacrifice a lot of sleep. 
(laughs) (laughs) Unfortunately, this is the hardest part for me. And uh, I don't know, is there anything else that you would say you've had to sacrifice with having kids and running a company at the same time? Yeah, definitely free time. I mean, I think any parent though would say this. I mean, it's not just because, you know, I've got a company as well, but any parent, you give up a lot of your free time. As I was talking about, you know, your your kids need you for a lot of the day. So you have less time to do whatever you want to do. And that I had a hard time with at first. I've more adjusted to that. But I do think the extra, you know, there can be extra responsibilities with having your own company that often eat into your time. And what's another way to, what's another way to say this? I mean, that's one thing going back to like, would I still start something is, you know, I think because I'd have more limited time, I'd be asking myself is like the time I'm putting in, is this really what I want to be working on? And I think that would lead me again towards starting a company. Like, okay, I want to, I want to start something because of the limited time. Almost like you have limited time and so you really want to love what yes. you're doing in that yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you know, because it's not like, oh, I can really work on what I love in after hours. It's like, well, there's not a ton of time after hours, right? So during the day, you better like what you're working on. That's how I view it, at least. Yeah, it really all comes back to time. I know I've been talking about that a lot, but that was like the biggest thing for me to reckon with and has been the biggest challenge. So... Now putting yourself in Emily's shoes, like she is a mother and she has a career and her husband is running his own company. Like what would she say is the hardest part about all of that? Probably, you know, the uncertainty around running a small company that it feels less stable than working a job at a big company. In practice, I'm not sure it is actually that much less stable because big companies like you've seen like during the pandemic here, they've had layoffs and things all the time. So I'm not sure in practice it actually is a lot less stable, but it feels that way. And I think that can be hard at times that, you know, what's, what's going to happen with, you know, the business, where are things going to go? And it's easy easy to worry about that. So I think that would be, and that really only, that really only comes up when we run into like some kind of challenge, right? Like day to day, that's not really it, but it's like we hit some major obstacle. Some competitor comes out with something, right? Or some product is delayed or some other, you know, major issue. And it's like, oh man, this feels so risky. Like, is everything going to be okay? That can be hard. Yeah. I mean, I feel like in the company we've hit some pretty big hurdles, but I don't know. We keep pushing onward. So I don't know. It's good. Yeah. Well, over time, it feels better too, because it feels like there's a momentum and that each year we generate more momentum. And so it's harder to stop that. It's like just builds more and more and more. Like it's easier, it feels like for something to take down a one person company than a 10 person company or a hundred person company or a thousand person. Like each one is, has more, traction in the marketplace, has more customers, has more revenue, has and makes it harder to completely take it down. So each year we move, we push things forward. It does feel better in that regard. Yeah. So I'm sure it was much more nerve wracking at the beginning of the company. Yeah. Is there any part of you that thinks that being a parent has made you a better CEO? Yeah, I do think so. Because it's made me rely on other people more and have to trust other people more. And delegate things where it's like, oh, I want to do all these things and I want to do them all myself, which is not a good tendency. Not at all, especially a CEO, not a good. But when you don't have time to do it and you still want to get them done, you have no choice but to push them off and give other people more responsibility. So it's really forced me to structure the company in a way too that more people can take over responsibilities that I used to have. And that's good, not just for me, but that's good for the company too. And that's really the direction things should be moving. So it really forced me in that direction. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's really good. I mean, I can, I guess I could say I've seen that in you over the last few years, or even like, you know, you and Giovanni are a really good team where if one of you is going through something, like I can see that the other one picks up more of the workload during that time. 
So probably having like a good business partner is important too oh, if yeah, you're that's having huge. a family. Yeah. yeah, especially with what I was talking about earlier, like the paternity leave and things too. Like that made it really easy for me as well because I knew my co-founder had got everything under control. You know, if the team needs anything, you know, he's there. And if something really blows up, he'll let me know. But, you know, he's he's there to take care of things. It'd be really, really hard. I think it would be close to... Unless you had some senior people you really trusted that had been around a long time, if you were a solo founder, it would be really, really hard. You'd need to have, yeah, somebody that had been around for years that you could put everything in the hands of. Because, yeah, it can be, it can be, well, that's what made it easier for me to be able to step away too, is knowing that like, okay, all right, my co-founder's taking over. Yeah, yeah. Okay, would you say that you have such a thing as work-life balance? Oh man, this is hard to answer during times of this COVID pandemic. Yeah. Right now it kind of all blurs together, right? Like I don't really leave the house. Yeah, <laughs> so I feel that hard. too. It's really hard. It's like, what day of the week is it even? So that's really hard to answer right now. In general, I would say yes, because my kids force me to have it, right? Like I could try and work on the computer when my kids are home. I could try and work on stuff, but my son's going to come in and be like, come play with me, come play with me. You know, like he's, he's not going to go for it either. Right. So it really forces that because I work from home. Right. And they need help. They need, and they're, they're going to let me know if they don't like what I'm doing. So I would say that does really force it. And it also makes sure, as I was saying earlier, that where you're spending time is things that are important to you, you know, that, it's like, well, if it's not, if it's not important, if it's not something you want to be doing, like, why are you, why are you spending time on it? Because you just realize how, how few hours there are in a day. Yeah. And it's interesting because if you were going into work in an office every day, you know, at five o'clock, if you still had stuff to work on, it'd be really easy to just stay there because you wouldn't have will asking you to play, but that wouldn't be fair to Emily. And so, yeah, it almost seems like maybe being at home, you do have more of a a work-life balance, even though it does blur, but you're forced to like pay attention to your kids because they're right there. Yeah, no, that's one thing that's helped a lot that I didn't answer earlier is being able to set my own schedule helps an enormous amount with this. For somebody that has to go into an office or has, you know, more of a set schedule, it's harder, but me being able to really set up my schedule, I can really set things so that it works well for my kids as well. And my wife, Emily, can do the same. And so that working from home works really well for that. And then, you know, then it's easy to jump on, you know, maybe they go down for a nap or, you know, after they go in bed and you got to work on something, working from home then makes it really easy to be able to jump in and work on it. So I feel like being a parent and working from home and a flexible schedule work really, really well together. It can, as you said, the lines can get very blurry between them. I do think there's other things that can help with that. Like if, if you're fortunate enough to have your own office area or doing different things to make it feel different when you're working versus just being at home. But ultimately it's a big win, not having that commute time and being able to log on and off, you know, as necessary really just helps a ton. Okay, so just to wrap this up, do you have any last minute advice for someone who's starting a family and a business around the same time? Mm, Yeah, good question. Well, there is no perfect time either. So I wouldn't delay at least too much on either of those things. If you are trying to find, find the perfect time, you know, once you're in it, you start to figure it out. I would also encourage you to, yeah, delegate more at work. If you have a team that you can delegate things to more, get the help of friends and family at home as well. Really, you'll find it's a lot easier to help, to get the help of friends and family and, you know, your team at work. That's going to make it a lot, lot easier. And so don't try to, don't try to do everything on your own and think you can be a superhero and just tackle it all. Like that's not realistic. You know, it's okay to ask for help. That's one thing. Yeah, what else would I? I think it's nice to hear you talk about asking for help because I feel like there's this narrative that I see a lot in the media of like, 
you can do it all. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially for women. Like, I mean, women, like, we can do it all. But I do think, like, you have to ask for help. Like, you, you know, are going to have to make sacrifices with some things. And I don't know. Sometimes I just feel like in the media, like, people just kind of, I don't know, romanticize things a little bit too much and, like, don't talk about how hard it can be. And so... Yeah, I don't think a lot of that's realistic. And as I was saying, yeah, it is okay to ask for help. And I think the idea that you can have it all, yeah, is it's kind of BS. Like, you're going to be able to put less time into, say, like your career, but that's that's not necessarily a bad thing because you're going to have other avenues in your life then, like your kids, that you're happy and excited about and get genuine joy from, right? So I don't view it in that light that – Oh, I have less time to work on my career. That's a negative, right? No, it's it's being replaced with other things that I enjoy. Yeah. And like you said, like you are just as productive or and even more ambitious than you were before. It's just sort of shuffled around and like reallocated in terms of the time that you devote right. to it. It's, sh- it's shuffled around. The other thing is that I'm more choosy with what I work on. You got to pick and choose more rather than trying to do, again, just tons of different things at once. It's like, well, there's, I don't have capacity for that. I need to pick like, okay, these two things I'm going to work on or this one thing I'm going to work on. And again, not a bad thing. You know, put most of the effort behind what's given the results. Well, I feel like I sort of grilled you. I asked you some hard (laughs) questions. Nah, you didn't grill me. I think it's really interesting. I'll be curious to see how it continues for you as your kids get older and I don't know how it changes and yeah it's an interesting yeah, journey yeah, to too. watch it's, yeah it's definitely a journey but it's been a good one mm-hmm. right well anything else no no well thanks Savannah yeah this was fun bye-bye <laughs>